So we have boxes. This here is a Creality Falcon Pro 10 watt laser cutter. It has been sent to me to do videos on it. I don't really do reviews, especially not really tech reviews. So today we're going to be unboxing and hopefully getting it to its first cut stages. I have seen a bunch of these kind of open frame lasers around on the internet, and I know that there are some safety things with them, so we're going to do our best to use this as safely as we possibly can. But I am really actually quite excited to have laser cutting as an option for me before this reason. This here is a plastic tub full of a ton of laser cut parts. All of these have been used as templates in previous builds. I'll often do a wooden template for something that I want to get laser cut out of Hardox, or I'm going to be cutting in HDPE or something. It helps line up drill holes, it helps like throw together a very quick template before actually doing the uh, final cutting. And so far I've been doing all of this at my local makerspace, and it would be really nice to be able to do that here at home. Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic. Okay, we have moved out of the filming area because this is huge and I needed more space to set it up. So we are gonna take these out and we're gonna start with the main box. It actually has the latest cutter in it. The rest of these are accessories we'll get to in a minute. If I stay behind the camera there. But this guy, this is the one that actually has a laser cutter in it. I need to not hit my drill press, it is right next to me. So we have instructions, test material it looks like, which that's gonna be interesting. Uh, an operation guide, that's cool, have a look at that in a minute. And then we have, okay, control board with emergency stop. That's nice, that's a good emergency stop. Uh, the laser head itself, that's cool. Please read the security statement, okay. I'll get that out in a minute. Laser goggles, which who knows how good those are gonna be. Tubing, feet, power supply. I wonder if they've given me the right uh, power connector for these. All right, box of screws and some tools, okay, cool. Uh, so, as mentioned, an electronics box, which means this has got to be a gantry. Oh, it is a gantry. Look at that. It's looking pretty, uh, well, together at the moment. Well, I mean, not together, but like this piece looks pretty good. So that's cool. I like machines that ship with very little work needed on my end. Ah, yes, okay. It's got an American plug on it because of course it does. A lot of things come to Australia with American plugs on them. That's fine. I will find a different cord to run that with. That's totally fine. Right, I'm going to put this down and then what do we got? Okay, so we've got some more kind of aluminum extrusion. It looks like it's just fancified. Uh, and then, ah, an air assist. That's cool. That's going to help cutting things. And then finally, the things that are jammed in the foam, which is more aluminium, aluminium extrusion in a cool color, actually. I wonder if they're doing that themselves, if there's a way to buy aluminium extrusion like this, because this is cool, I like this a lot. And then a sheet of stickers. Before we get to assembly, we are gonna look at all the boxes all at once. So the next box is this long flat box, which may not have even, oh, this is a honeycomb plate. That's cool. Yes, this is really, really good. So this is to go under work pieces to avoid cutting through the base or cutting through my workbench here. So look at that. Yes, it's actually going to survive pretty well. Oh, and it's got a like full sheet as well. I'm not sure how I feel about this because a reflective sheet underneath the thing that you're cutting sounds like a recipe to bounce lasers everywhere and I don't know I quite like that, but all right. I guess we don't have to use it for that. And final box time, all right. So, 
Ah, oh, now this is cool. This is something that I really wanted for this. So this is an in laser engraver enclosure. Now, as far as I understand, the honeycomb and these are separate products, but in my, like from the laser cutter stuff that I've seen online, something like this is very, very necessary because it allows you to vent gas off from the laser, which uh, is very necessary for long-term health and safety things. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna have a viewing window in it that is laser safety rated, but it should, or at least whatever you're using to enclose a laser should have, any viewing window should be laser safety rated. I don't know if that's gonna be the case. They did send some laser goggles, which I don't know how good a quality these are. I probably should buy a set of like Australian rated laser safety goggles because they don't know what I've got and that it's gonna work. Uh, but yeah, this is coming with an exhaust vent. I don't actually think it's got a vent itself. No, it's just got... Quick update, I was wrong. This here is a fan of some description. Uh, okay, yeah, so it's a little like PC case fan kind of deal. It's probably not exactly a PC case fan, but that looks like it's designed, yeah, to go into this holder. So I'm not sure this is all the extraction that I would want for a laser cutter, but at least it's something. It's definitely better than just running it open air on the table. Uh, and that looks like, yeah, so there's parts in here, including a fan grill and stuff to attach all that. So that's cool, I like that. So we were gonna jump straight on into the build process for this. This is the user manual here. It does have a build log in the back of it, which is good. I also have one on my laptop over there but I was going through their booklet and they do actually have a little security statement here and it's pretty good, I would say. They do mention wearing the goggles and also using the laser in a ventilated space, which is all good. They do recommend putting things to be cut on something that can't be cut through and they say aluminium or stainless steel in here. Again, I'm personally not too sure about that, but then again, I am also not an expert on laser safety, so maybe that is correct, I don't know, but personally I wouldn't really want to be putting too many reflective things underneath my laser because that just sounds like it's gonna kind of go everywhere. Anyway, I'm gonna read through the rest of this and then we're gonna step through, or I'm gonna step through. And here we go, mostly set up now. I haven't done the tent thing yet that is the enclosure to kind of suck gas and stuff out from this machine, but it is now all put together. That wasn't too bad a process, to be honest. It took uh, 20 minutes, half an hour, like not long at all, and it probably would have taken less time if I would just built through rather than sitting around and filming in bits and pieces. So that was pretty good. 
The other thing that's interesting here that I didn't realize before I did the build process is this has a key lock on it. So the actual power system goes through a key. Now these keys, I would assume, are just a like fairly standard, yeah, single prong. They're not even really a key. Uh, they're more a key shaped tool. For me though, I don't need this. I uh, don't have anybody else in this workshop, so I'm just gonna leave this thing turned on. Well, at least turned on with that. We'll leave the emergency stop working. This is a really nice emergency stop though. So give me a sec, I will build the tent and then we will get going on powering this thing up and cutting some parts. All right, and here we go. We are now set up with the tent with some kind of um, actual laser screening here. I'm not sure, again, uh, if this is properly laser rated. I am not qualified to test that, but at least it is something and it's not just a uh, transparent plastic that wouldn't stop anything at all. So. That's really cool. This tent is really good. It was really quick and easy to set up actually, and I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, there is a fan in the back, which is hopefully blowing air out that way uh, through an open door. We will test that in a minute. Once I get everything fired up and running, we will have a look at the actual exhaust while this thing is cutting and see how we go. I did have an issue with my computer. I've actually had to borrow a machine to get everything hooked up. I have a very, very old laptop that I would normally run things like this on and I used to run 3D printers on it. But unfortunately the drivers just did not work on that and I, that's more down to my machine than anything else. This new machine that is running on Windows 10, I uh, plugged into it and it just worked first try. So it was definitely my machine and not the actual laser cutter itself. Uh, so I'm going to zip this back down and try out my very first test cuts here. Uh, I've also got my laser goggles on as well. Can't be uh, too safe with these machines. But once I've done all of that, I will probably also uh, flip this guy back up again and run some cuts not in the room so that you guys can see the machine actually working and doing things. All right, let's talk results here. So I have been cutting a bit with this machine. I cut a whole bunch of stuff in three mil and then I jumped up to six mil, which is what this is here. And as you can see, I managed to cut a decent amount on the six mil. However, it was after I cut them on the six mil that I realized I had a warp in one of the axes. This part in particular is kind of bad. You can see the edges. I have a warp in the horizontal axis which I didn't know how to get out. I tried messing around with a bunch of things, including removing the air assist, which just caused really, really bad looking parts, uh, but didn't fix the warping issue in any way. I mean, I've got a bunch of these and they all just warped. Uh, and it turns out that it is to do with the gantry. On the gantry, there are eccentric nuts, and by tightening or loosening those, you can move how tight everything is on that carriage. And that helps a little bit with this, but also my actual plates that hold the gantry together weren't tight enough. So I had to go through and tighten all four screws. Uh, and I did a bunch of testing when I was going through and doing that. And yeah, I slowly eked back towards better and better results. But this is not a plug and play machine by any means, at least not in my experience. I needed to do a whole bunch of work to get the actual machine to sit down and play nice. And it is now playing nice. This part here was one of the very first three mil cuts that I got working. Oh, that's the other thing. I had to clean the lens of the laser too. The first time I tried to cut anything with the laser, it did not even mark the surface of the wood but pulling the laser module apart, cleaning the lenses out, I managed to cut parts out of three mil and then six mil pretty easily with the warp in them, of course. Eventually though, as mentioned, I finally got down 
to an actual square part, but it did take quite a lot of tinkering, a lot more tinkering than I was intending to do here. Uh, especially as I don't actually have a lot of like files or anything to do testing like this with. So I just had to kind of test a lot of things by eye. Now, what we have cut out here is a new wedge for Wedgie Robot here. So we're just gonna drop this on and make sure everything lines up as it should. I'm thinking it will now that I've got the machine dialed in, but that is what we are here to find out. Now this robot was used as a spinner at one point, so it's actually taken some damage and you can see, you can see an exposed heat insert nut there, which probably isn't actually that good for it, but it does look like these parts do line up. So that's handy. Yeah, look at that. Uh, other than the fact that I dropped the other bolt, no problem at all making up this wedge and having it actually sitting down pretty straight. You can see along the bottom there, that's actually pretty good. It might be a little bit off just from the print and having had the print take damage, but it actually sits, it should be pretty good. This would need to obviously be sanded down before being used as a wedge, but that has come out pretty well. So I'm gonna to have to mess around with this machine a little bit more. I think there's still some more tuning and tweaking that can be done to get better quality parts out of this. And as ARC runs the Plastic League with MDF as a legal material, I might even make an entire robot out of laser cut parts at some point, especially if I can get everything working nicely because a chassis like this takes many hours to print, but if I can cut the whole thing out of six mil and glue it together, it's gonna to take no time to make that chassis. Anyway, that is going to be it for me from this video. I hope you have enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.